director of the Writers Group and I welcome you. Since 2014, our group of Greek and Greek American writers and poets have met regularly. Our Facebook page allows us to communicate with the international scene and we've invited speakers from Jordan, Greece and now Cyprus. Today, we are excited to share a distinguished poet and author from Cyprus, Christos Tielis. I met Christos several years ago on Facebook when he coordinated a poetry event that involved people adding a phrase or poem together to make one gigantic poem. I joined in the fun and it was a very creative endeavor. Then we communicated and shared our books and I've enjoyed reading his sci-fi novel, Closer Surfaces. This technological thriller captured my interest. We're flirting with death and conquering it through science becomes a goal for the brilliant scientist, Jordan Dabblemore. Once a Freemason, he discards this role and pursues immortality through the help of Dr. Makoto and his two Greek scientists. Through their nanotechnology research, they have concocted the wonder drug Gamma Clotho. The author masterfully juggles several layers of time dimensions as the story progresses, revealing Dabblemore's elaborate plans. His secretary and lover, Roxanne Fell, wants desperately to join him on this path, but he has other plans for her after his 50-year-old self visits him and informs him of his future. Dabblemore leaves her with a letter that asks her to wait for him and join him in 50 years. Little does he know what will await him 50 years later. Will he continue to love her even when she has turned against him? His grandson, Nevo, and others need to be convinced that what Dabblemort has planned is to their benefit. The story transcends the boundaries of human existence where people travel back and forth in time and through underground tunnels and where evil in people can be erased, allowing the pure self to emerge. The author has done a masterful job in applying nanotechnology, time travel, and other advanced technologies toward this pursuit of immortality. At the same time, the author brings up moral issues like who gets to live and who gets to die? And how, how does one know if the evil has left the person? I'm hoping Cialis continues writing these incredible stories. We've invited Dr. Polivia Parada of the Classics Department at the University of Maryland to moderate this event, and she graciously accepted. She has been a prominent supporter of our writers group and has helped to edit the Greek portion of our bilingual poetry book anthology last year, Glimpses of Our World. We are also pleased Christos has invited Dr. Michael Tomazos from Davidson College to join us as a special guest and two other guests, Ann Wilson and Dr. Clay Coffer, who will be introduced later. I'd also like to thank my son, Antonia Apostolides for the technical aspects of this Zoom event. And now I give you Dr. Parada. Thank you, dear Patty. It's always a great pleasure being with you and your lovely group of authors. I am Polivia Parara and I teach modern Greek studies at the University of Maryland College Park. I really admire Patty's work in this Hellenic Writers Group and I feel honored and delighted when I'm invited to participate. Today I'm going to present Mr. Christos Tsiailis and makes a few remarks on his work. Author uh, Christos Tsiailis was born in Nicosia, Cyprus in 1974 and lived his childhood and teenage years in the town of Athienu before he moved back to Nicosia in 1994. He is an English teacher and is currently attending a master's degree in the theory of theater. For years, he has been a triathlete, triathlete, excuse me, and marathon runner finished the Athens Marathon four times and has competed in sprint, Olympic distance and half Ironman triathlon races, in half marathon and marathon races and in swimming events. A lot of his writing involved experiences for the sports world. He travels a lot and gets inspired by his contact with other cultures. He incorporates his writing in various genres, poetry, short story, novel, theater, and his writing tends towards a blend of a social, psychological, and philosophical quest, usually with a touch of science fiction. Christos writes both in English and Greek. He's the author of six books, including novels, 
short story collections, and poetry collections. He is also a playwright and assistant director in theater plays. His publications include short stories and poems in literary magazines and anthologies around the world. Part of his work has been translated into several languages, such as Spanish, Arabic, Uzbek, Indian, and so on. He has received prizes for short stories, theatrical plays, and poetry. He's occasionally a member of panel ending literary contest committees or a judge in poetry slams. He has translated poetry, collections, individual poems, and short stories of authors from other countries, from English to Greek. He's a coordinator at the Sovolos Municipality Literature Club and director at the Diabasis Writers Group. I will provide a few commentary on two of his works, the poetic collection Ophimomenos Wa, The Muzzled, and on the short stories collections entitled Topsumi. From the first story of the collection, The Bread, Topsumi, Christo Tsiailis expresses man's existential agony and struggle with the system that fights him to alienate him. This struggle with an impersonal corrupted system is exhaustive for the nature of the human being and it forces the man to his alienation. By using a semiotic language, Christotialis expresses the desire to fight back the alienating system and allow the human being to advance towards his self-realization and freedom. The pencil, Tomolivi, the pencil act as a semiology of the conformist self, which weights down and crushes the free self, the self we love and long to become is the first story of his collection of stories. The discomfort of the modern man, all the weights he wants to eliminate, is symbolized by an obese body that suffers and feels uncomfortable and that he tries to get rid of it through a lot of pains. I quote. Στο γραφείο πήγα ξανά δύο μήνες μετά. Η εγχείρηση για το δαχτυλίδι στο στομάχι είχε πετύχει, όπως προς το παρόν έδειχνε, και έτρωγα πολύ λιγότερο. Ένιωθα ότι είχα αρχίσει να ξεφουσκώνω, να χάνω κιλά, να ξεφεύγω από την οδυνηρή ολίστηση των τελευταίων δέκα ετών, καθώς είχα δυστυχώς πετύχει να φτάσω τα 190 κιλά. Βέβαια, μετά την εγχείρηση, δεν είχα πέσει και πολύ κάτω παρόλη την επιβεβλημένη στέρηση. Όλο φρούτα, φρούτα όλη μέρα. Δεν άντεχα άλλο. Δεν ήξερα αν είχα φτάσει να τα ερωτευτώ ή να τα μισήσω για πάντα. Κάλλιο να έκανα λιπαναρόφηση. Θα ήταν πολύ πιο άμεσο, αλλά και προσωρινό φοβάμαι. Λεπτό σαν στυλό για λίγο και μετά στα ίδια και χειρότερα. Δεν πειράζει, όπως λένε, Uden monimoteron to prosorinu. The symbolism of the surgical operation for placing a stomach ring to reduce the recourse to food shows the effort to intervene with a technical solution. Of course, this artificial intervention does not seem to be enough to improve the state of discomfort. Symbols such as the pencil and the obese body become the semiotic symbol of abstract concepts of authority and bureaucracy and corruption that bind and close and crush the being. Αποφάσισα να αγνοήσω όλη αυτή την κούραση για να επιτελέσω το έργο. Μόλις όμως έβαλα μπροστά μου τα έγγραφα, ένιωσα αμέσω ότι το μολύβι μου ζήγιζε περισσότερο και από εμένα. Το χέρι μου, με το οποίο το κρατούσα, δεν κουνιόταν με τίποτα. Δεν μπορούσα να γυρίσω την παλάμη για να γράψω ή έστω να αφήσω το μολύβι στο γραφείο. Λες και ένας αόρατος, πανίσχυρος μαγνήτης το είχε ενώσει με το δέρμα μου. Ξαφνικά, αντιλήφθηκα ότι μου τραβούσε με δύναμη τα δάκτυλα μακριά από την επιστολή της λειτουργούς του τμήματος μεταναστεύσεων. Ήθελα να γράψω τις παρατηρήσεις μου σε εκείνη τη λίστα με τα διαβατήρια των ετουμένων, 
Τα μισά τουλάχιστον μάλλον ήταν πλαστά και έπρεπε να καλέσω ανακριτική, μα δεν μπορούσα. Μου ήταν αδύνατο. Είχα χάσει τον έλεγχο και δεν ξέρω που βρήκα εκείνη τη στιγμή το σθένος να παραλληλήσω την κατάστασή μου με ένα σενάριο που ήθελε τις ερήμους των αραβικών χωρών να πλημμυρίζουν από το ρομητικά νερά του τίγρη και το εφράτη χάνοντας την πνιγμένη πια ελπίδα της αυτοκυριαρχίας. Το κόκκινο μολύβι ήταν επίμονο, παντοδύναμο, βαρύ, λες κι όσα κιλά είχα χάσει με την επέμβαση, τα αφομοίωσε αυτό σε ένα άλλο. Παράλληλο σύμπαν που με καλούσε εκείνη τη στιγμή και με αυτόν τον παράξενο τρόπο. The method of storytelling in pencil is first person with an internal focus. The narrator is the hero of the story who introspects, narrates, meditates and makes the reader a part of the internal processes of existential search and struggle as he experiences it. The choice of inner focus brings the reader closer to the narrator and creates a closeness between them for the suffering person and shares the internal struggle and an external oppression. Catharsis comes through the hero's pain and the semiotics of a marathon race. The anonymous hero opens a passage of promise to freedom by paying the price. He proposes that the solution lies in removing the declining and corrupt environment and cutting it off radically. Εγώ ήξερα πολύ καλά από εκείνη την ημέρα ότι για όλα η πέτειο ήταν το μολύβι που το είχα εμπιστευτεί. Με χρυσό του μου απεκάλυψε την πραγματική του ταυτότητα και χαρακτήρα. Την ημέρα που ήρθα αντιμέτωπο με τα συμφέροντά του. Έδωσα απαραίτηση από το Υπουργείο και έφυγα για τον πόλεμο. Ο πόλεμος τελείωσε γρήγορα. Ευτυχώς. Το μόνο που ήθελα ήταν να ρίξω έστω και μία σφαίρα στο, έρω... στο έδαφος των βορείων, όπου και αν με έστελναν. Έτσι, για το γαμό του. Όλα έγιναν εν ρηπή οφθαλμού. Ήμουν πίσω ανέπαφος και με γεμάτες τις μπαταρίες εγκαίρος, για να προετοιμαστώ για τον μαραθώνιο. Είχα δύο μήνες και τρεις εβδομάδες ακριβώς. Το μολύβι... Δεν το ξαναείδα και δεν ήταν πια το μολύβι μου. In his collection of short stories of me, the author alternates the narrative technique. In the last short story entitled Δίδυμε στα σκοτεινά επαναδιαπραγμάτευση, Twins in the Dark Renegotiation, Thysatsiailis describes an apocalypse as a result of the intellectual and ethical decline uses focalization for zero as a narrative technique. Tsiaili's omniscient narrator is found outside of the story. And this is because the omniscient, omniscient narrator is something like a divine eye. He describes, excuse me, the destruction and self-destruction of the man by the man himself. He describes the intellectual darkness leading to death in agony. Then in Alithino Skotadi, μην ψηλαφίζετε, έξω υπάρχει φως. Είναι το σκοτάδι του πνεύματος. Μην ψηλαφίζετε, υπάρχει φως. Δεν είναι αληθινό σκοτάδι. Είναι το σκοτάδι του πνεύματος. Ψάξτε με την καρδιά και το μυαλό σας ένα ασφαλές σημείο και μείνετε εκεί. Έξω υπάρχει φως. Κατόπιν συνέχισε να μεταδίδεται συνεχώς η ίδια ανακοίνωση μέχρι να ακούσουν όλοι, ανεξαιρέτως. Μα δεν μπορούσαν να κατανοήσουν τι έλεγε η ανακοίνωση. Γιατί όντως έξω υπήρχε φως και όλα τα ζώα και τα φυτά απολάμβαναν μια υπέροχη λιακάδα. Μα το σκοτάδι, σταδιακά και μεθοδικά, τους κατακαιρμάτιζε την νόηση και τους αφαιρούσε όλα τα συναισθήματα και τη λογική. Γιατί είχε επέλθει πια επί γης η εποχή του πνευματικού σκοταδισμού. Κοντά, πολύ κοντά στο τέλος. With the subject of biblical apocalypse, he succeeds in showing that intellectual darkness is an abnormality in human nature, resulting in anarchy and the subversion of the order. Only the light of the ethical and intellectual uplift current disorder 
and harmony. Only those who can remain inalienated towards their being will be able to survive. The semiology of the immortal archangels, Michael and Gabriel, who are looking for the mortal twins, Michaela Erato and Gabriela Mirofora, the only survivors, symbolizes the rebirth of the man's condition to begin a new promising journey towards the completion of the self. O Gabriel, Πιάνει από το χέρι τον Μιχαήλ. Του μιλάει ήρεμα. Έλα, Γαβρίλ. Δεν είμαι ο Γαβρίλ. Ο Μιχαήλ είμαι. Κι εγώ το ίδιο. Μην ανησυχεί. Είμαστε και οι δύο το ίδιο. Και Μιχαήλ και Γαβρίλ. Έλα μαζί μου. Με εμπιστεύεσαι τώρα. Το ξέρω. Κατάλαβες ότι δεν είσαι σίγουρος πια για αυτό που βλέπεις. Καλό είναι αυτό. Πάμε. Θα δεις. Είναι δύο γυναίκες που έχουν απομείνει μόνες στον πλανήτη. Δεν εισήλθαν στο σκοτάδι όταν... Μα... Έλα. Είναι η και μυροφόρα. Πάμε. Θα τη συμπαθήσεις αμέσως. The short stories in the Brett collection present man's existential struggle and through the semiotics of apocalypse proposes a new human condition project. In this poetic collection, the muzzled wow, the poet does not introduce a poetic narrative by using either an omniscient narrator outside of what is happening or a narrator with an inner focus being himself in the story and having the partial and subjective knowledge of poetic narrative. The poetic narrative was, wait, excuse me, the poetic narrative way chosen by Christos Tsiailis in the poetic collection, the muzzled, is very inventive and original, and it goes beyond the traditional narrative forms of the narrator's zero focus or inner focus. Instead of using these well-known methods, Christus Cialis invents a poetic narrative that is subversive of the traditional narrative. He mutes the poet narrator. He subjectivizes the object of the poetry, making the poem a narrator himself. The personified and substantiated poetic discourse speaks, resents, accuses, and attacks the poet who becomes inactive and remains on the sidelines, a muffled and passive recipient of the speech of poetry. He only shouts, wow. Grafome, grafome, grafome. Γράφομαι χρόνια τώρα και είμαι ιδέα σαν πόρτα που κλείνει και ανοίγει. Κι ύστερα κλείνει οριστικά, νομίζεις. Κι ύστερα πάλι ανοίγει και μια ιδέα πάλι ξεμητάει. Σε κοιτάει, την κοιτάς. Να σε γράψω, τη ρωτάς. Μα δεν απαντάει, οι ιδέες δεν απαντούν. Με είπε πείμα τη επανάληψη, Με είπε πω τι λέξει που αγαπάω τι λέω και τι ξαναλέω. Και αφού για λίγο καιρό τις ξεχνάω, τις λέω ξανά και τις επαναλαμβάνω. Με είπες πείμα της επανάληψης, με είπες, και έχω πληγωθεί. Έχω πληγωθεί, μα όχι ανεπανόρθωτα, γιατί το ξέρω πως θα ανακαλέσεις. Μια μέρα ξέρω πως θα καταλάβεις η επανάληψη τι εστί, γιατί ακόμα δεν γνωρίζεις η ιδέα από την πόρτα όταν ξεμητά, τι πίσω της αφήνει όταν η πόρτα κλείνει. Όταν την πόρτα κλείνει. Δεν ξέρεις τι σκέφτεται να σε γράψω όταν τη ρωτάς. Γιατί δεν γνωρίζεις ότι πίσω από την πόρτα κρύβεται η επανάληψη. Η επανάληψη. Γιατί δεν γνωρίζεις ότι ο κόσμος των ιδεών του Πλάτωνα ήταν ένα πιστό αντίγραφο κοντά, πολύ κοντά μας και δεν ήταν ποτέ κρυμμένο σε άλλο σύμπαν παράλληλο. Μον πίσω από την πόρτα που θέλεις πάντοτε κλειστή, πάντοτε κλειστή, μην ξεχυθούν με μια ιδέε όλες μαζί. Γιατί μαζί αν βγούνε σοριδών με επανάληψη ή χωρίς, μπορεί να τρελαθείς, μπορεί να τρελαθείς, μπορεί. What does this choice mean? Perhaps this innovative form of poetic discourse gives a different meaning to the work of poetry. 
Perhaps Hrisotsiailis suggests three things. First, no one can speak on behalf of another being, even his own creation. Secondly, that the creation itself claims its autonomous existence upon its birth. And thirdly, that every being exists in itself. In other words, the form of poetic expression speaks for itself, having the form serving the content, as it claims self-determination, autonomy, and freedom. That expressed by the subjectivization of the poems, the question that arises is how deprived is the man's condition for self-determination, autonomy, and freedom? And to what extent is the man trapped by the false perception that he enjoys them all? How autonomous is a modern man in the private and, and public spheres? How much freedom does he or she enjoy to advance man's self completion These questions are posed to us by the substantiated poetic subject of Christos Tsiailis. We are happy to have Christos Tsiailis today with us to share his point of view on poetry and writing. What is the purpose of your writing? How do you understand the role of the poet in his society? How do you envision the future of modernity? Dear Christos, the floor is yours. Okay, good evening, everybody. Good evening, um, Dr. Olivia Parra, for, and thank you very much for this. And I don't know if, I, if you can hear me well, if I am loud enough. Yes, because it's the first uh, contact I make. Uh, I want to thank Ipatia uh, uh, Apostolidis for this uh, invitation. It's an honor for me to meet the Hellenic uh, writers of uh, uh, Washington, D.C. I want to thank uh, Dr. Michael Tumazu for being here with us tonight, Dr. Clay Koffer and uh, poetess uh, Anne Tamel Ann Wilson. Um, uh, uh, I gladly accepted this invitation. I also want to thank Dr. Um, the Mayor of Athenu, Mr. Kiriakos uh, Karaklas, for being here with us, and a, a lot of friends that I see uh, here. Um, I can see a lot of uh, writers, poets, uh, friends of literature, which, uh, which is a, it, it makes this an excellent uh, meeting to talk about literature, as far as I'm concerned. Um, now, it's not very easy to start talking about uh, your work, and uh, that's why we have uh, our friends, academics, who can really take the, the literature as it is and uh, transform it to a very semantical and very uh, meaningful uh, piece of uh, work, because uh, literature as it is, is uh, mostly emotional, and uh, transcendental. It, it, it does not analyze itself as it is, even if sometimes poems speaks, speak for themselves, <laughs> as uh, Dr. Lee Bolivia has uh, uh, pointed out before. There are people here who know me, people who know me, people who don't know me. Uh, I don't know if I should introduce myself, Dr. Bolivia. I read uh, bio, and I'm very thankful for that at the beginning. Um, uh, I don't. I should start by answering to <laughs> Dr. Polivia. She posed some questions. Uh, first of all, uh, if I remember well, didn't mark the questions down. If I remember well, it was uh, how I get inspired or something like that. I mean, when uh, when I write, I believe, uh, like every poet or writer, I become a, a vessel or a filter of uh, the outside world, and I combine it somehow with my inner world and create this uh, magma, which is preferably lava, that will uh, uh, touch the reader, if it may do so. Um, uh, and uh, talking about uh, first, uh, first I could talk about uh, Psomi, uh, how I was inspired by that. Psomi for me is a very 
political book, uh, if I could say that, because it uh, sort of puts uh, the from the first uh, story, short story that Mrs. Polivia read very well with Molivi, puts uh, per places uh, the person, uh, the citizen, if you want, uh, in front of uh, the uh, system, the system, the political system, and there, there's a comfort, comfort, comf, comfort, comfort. confrontation <laughs> there. I found the word comf, confrontation, confrontation there, uh, which uh, makes uh, either the system uh, fight hard, hard to su subdue the citizen, or the citizen find ways to uh, either. Uh, touch freedom or uh, escape this harsh reality that we are living in. It's always a harsh reality. It's never an easy life. I mean, if, if, life, if life was easy, we wouldn't have to write literature <laughs> to escape from it because literature is, uh, is, a, is an escape place. It's a place where you can uh, relax and uh, find uh, new ways of uh, you know, uh, comforting yourself. That's how I think. That's how I see it. It comforts me, if I may say so. Um, now, uh, I don't know. I put some notes down to see what I could say to in this session because you know, you, I don't know if, if, if most of your writers here, or it's not nice to. I mean, you you prefer people talk about you, but if I have all of you in front of me, then I should say a few things. But because I want uh, uh, Mr. Thomas to say a few things before I do that, I could uh, I could sort of do some teases for what I will say later after Mr. Thomas, some uh, spoilers if you like, if you like watching <laughs> the movies. Now, well, for the first thing uh, I thought I should say is, uh, okay that uh, 2010 was not the first uh, year that I decided to publish a book. I, I had it in my mind uh, since 2000. And uh, I tried to publish a book. I went to Athens I, and I tried to find a publisher for my first uh, complete uh, novel, but I was rejected. <laughs> So that's one tease that I will, uh, yeah, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I will say, I will talk about later about how how people should uh, sort of try and, uh, 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 I don't know, promote uh, their books to publishers, how, how to to make, to convince publishers to accept them to publish. That's one thing I, sh I would like to share with you. Another thing is uh, uh, that I started writing, uh, Poems and short stories at the age of 15. Um, that's where I will meet uh, Dr. Tomazu's uh, speech uh, later, later on, which is coming right, right on. And uh, that I, I worked in uh, at least uh, 15 different jobs during my life. I'm not only an English teacher, I've done a lot. I've worked anywhere you can imagine from the lowest uh, you know grounds to highest grounds I will explain later that's another teaser um, uh, that I uh, uh, Ipatia talked about uh, Clotho at the beginning and she read from that and I thank you Ipatia for reading uh, there it's an honor for me to hear your voice uh, reading uh, part of uh, my your thoughts as well I spent five years writing Clotho Surface. It wasn't an easy task. And uh, the, the meanwhile, I started writing Clotho 2, which is, uh, it is finalized. And so it's coming up. You know, I won't say soon, I won't say ever. I mean, I won't say anything. <laughs> it's just when it comes out, I will, I will inform you. Uh, I want Ipadia to be the first one who will read it because <laughs> I know you're anxious to see, to see what's going on with uh, with Double Mort, where he's hiding. Okay, and uh, I've also planned the third uh, of the. It's a trilogy, so I've I've planned the third because uh, because uh, uh, Doctor Bolivi also asked me about my future plans. Uh, the plans of uh, an author is keep writing and keep publishing to to be connected with uh, his readers or her readers. And uh, 
then something last with I, which I could say is that it's very difficult to to bestow interpretation upon your writing. I, that's why we need academics to do so. I mean, I, it's impossible for me to to find the semantics and analyze them and the symbols and the parameters of my writing. It's very very hard, and uh, th that's why I. I always try and uh, connect with people who can uh, give me feedback on uh, how I write and uh, it helps me understand why I write the things I write because you know it, it's not it's not spontaneous it's of course it's uh, driven and uh, controlled but uh, you never know why it will get you and the the person who will analyze and read the the story after that will know. That's another teaser that I will analyze later. Okay. Uh, for the time being, that's a short thing that I wanted to, to use as an input. Uh, I would very much like to hear Dr. Tomazo to do what he has to say if uh, Antonis can help us. Uh, thank you for this nice uh, uh, thoughts about your work and yourself. My question was not, what was the future plans, but how do you envision the future of modernity, namely if you're oh, optimistic later. or pessimistic? I will answer later. I will answer later. later. Okay. That's fine. No, yeah, that's fine. By the way, it's I part of my later Panera. talk. Olivia is my first name. <laughs> Olivia is my first name. Now, I'm very glad to introduce uh, Dr. Michael Tomazes. Uh, Dr. My Michael Tomazes is a Cypriot native and an archaeologist who teaches courses in Greek and Roman art and architecture at Davidson College. He also oversees the Athenu Archaeological Project in Cyprus, offering his students the chance to live and work on a project as a summer internship. He has published a 27 chapter compilation on the archaeological findings entitled Crossroads and Boundaries. Dr. Tomazes will now tell us a few things about Christus and how he believes Christus' involvement as an assistant at the archaeological side of Athenu uh, when he was the teenager may have influenced his later career as a writer. Dr. Tomazos, the floor is yours. Hello, everybody, and thank you very much for inviting me uh, to say a few things, not too much, uh, uh, as to any impact mm -hmm. myself or my project has um, contributed to in the uh, formative years of uh, Christos' uh, life. Uh, as was already said, I'm directing the Athenu Archaeological Project, which we started in 1990. But unlike most foreign projects, uh, and uh, our project was different uh, in being a foreign project, but directed by a Cypriot. That's uh, the first in the history of the archaeology of Cyprus. Uh, and from the outset, I wanted to get the logos involved. And that's how um, Christus comes in. So uh, I um, very happily uh, um, employed for not much pay at all. You probably couldn't buy a few baklavas at the local Zorpas. But um, I, I included six or eight um, Cypriot young teenagers in the excavation, mixed, in, uh, mixed them with my own students from America and my I staff. So uh, Christos one, was one of the, uh, the lucky or unlucky ones who had to work in the sun all day, uh, digging in trenches, recovering um, antiquities in the forms of uh, ceramics, coins, broken um, statuary, uh, lamps, etc. So I think this um, uh, contact with the earth of Cyprus and its antiquities uh, uh, helped uh, him um, renew or rediscover um, the, uh, his own Greek roots, uh, connected him with the Greek myth and history and the culture of the island, uh, which I think um, in some small ways may have contributed to his um, development as a uh, distinguished uh, 
poet and author. Uh, the, uh, this putting together these uh, fragments and re-synthesizing things from the past, it's a part and parcel of uh, Christus's output. And um, uh, I'm happy that to have contributed in very small way in his development in that uh, sense. Uh, several other, maybe not so important, but uh, as it turns out, we're speaking in English now. And although Christos uh, had good English uh, from um, his uh, high school years and junior high school, um, his contact with our project, which involved a lot of American students, uh, um, helped uh, develop his uh, language skills. Uh, he hung out with uh, he and his brother and many other teenagers in the village, hang around our students, spend many hours together, playing basketball, going to weddings, uh, just sitting and talking, uh, developed uh, Christmas's uh, language skills. So he can be a, you know, equally accomplished in English as well as in Greek. Um, so, um, that's pretty much what I wanted to say, but I'm very honored that you have been asked to, um, to say a few things um, and uh, take great pride in uh, seeing Christus uh, as a distinguished already and very promising still, because he's very young. If he didn't know that, I'll tell him that. I'm just about to retire. And he's got many years to, uh, in production to offer for, um, for grateful readers. So. Thank you again. Thank you, Christos, and thank you all for inviting me. I'll be glad to, you know, say anything more, but if you have questions. Thank you, Minister Mayor, for joining us from Athiyan. Thank you, Dr. Tomatis. And now Christos would like to thank you too, Michalis. Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, so, Christos, uh, would you like to respond to Dr. Tomas's remarks? Course. Yes, yes, yes. First of all, I want to say that uh, I was overly touched uh, the moment you began talking because, you know, your childhood memory or um, you're the, one of the first people that I saw from abroad when I was a child, remember that? Even though you are, from, you are Cypriot, you, you were a foreigner to us. <laughs> you came as a, as a, you know, a person who would uh, discover and uh, unearth the secrets of uh, the Volgi uh, kingdom, which uh, is buried beneath Athena. I don't know. I mean, it's, is it Western or Northern? It's, uh, you know, but uh, I mean, I don't remember where you were taking us with your trucks to dig uh, pits out. <laughs> Clay, uh, Dr. Clay will uh, enlighten us later when he talks about this uh, project as well. Now, uh, yes, you brought a lot of memories back to me. Uh, those uh, never-ending uh, hours in the pits with uh, Joseph, you remember Joseph, he was uh, guiding us uh, on yeah. how to, of course, yes, how to yes, yes, uh, click, take a dig and take stuff and be very careful. That was precious material we were taking out and then we would take them to the kitchen garden place of Athena where I would uh, clean and how, uh, I mean, it's, it's something that uh, it's, it's, a, it's an unforgettable experience. And it's a very unique experience for someone to uh, even to, to, to see how uh, excavations can be made. Now, when it comes to literature, as Dr. Tomazu has pointed out, the most important thing I believe that uh, this uh, experience uh, had on me was uh, that I uh, I took fragments and I placed them in my memory and it helped me it sort of guided me through when I was writing poems or short stories to learn to defragment and then put fragments of reality into writing because when when writers uh, poets authors short storytellers uh, theater that what we get is, 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 is bits and pieces of reality and the world around us. And it's not a whole truth that we get and we just take and realistically write it down. We filter and uh, analyze and uh, reform what we learn.
from uh, the environment around us, for what we what we feel and what we sense from the environment uh, around us, and uh, then we sort of try to put it together. Uh, my writing uh, is influenced in uh, by many different, uh, you know, uh, I don't know themes if you like. I I, I deal. I try to. Uh, for to to use um, um, the the problem of the environment, uh, psychology, philosophy, if you like. Uh, if I remember, uh, some uh, philosophers that have influenced me is um, Carl Jung, for example, and uh, bringing uh, the theory of synchronicity of Carl Jung together with the idea of. Uh, unearthing uh, pieces of uh, ceramics from the earth there's so much con uh, so much connection between the two ideas synchronicity that is uh, the idea of uh, a coincidence uh, one coincidence leading to another is the same idea with the one piece of ceramic far away from the other that will finally meet up only if an archaeologist uh, sort of decides to go and dig uh, ceramics out. And only if a, a, a peasant, a person from the village first uh, discovers a small uh, place in his yard that has uh, ceramics there while he's digging to plant a tree. And that's a coincidence. And uh, if coincidence is not a plan that leads our lives, then nothing is. That's what Carl Jung uh, discovered. And I feel that uh, as I understand and uh, take in all this uh, idea of uh, synchronicity in our lives, I tried to put it in my book. My first book was uh, Throwing Dice on a Church Boat, which seems like a very uh, uh, paradox level to be a title. Um, uh, it, uh, throwing dice, you don't throw dice, you don't cast dice on a church boat. Still, life is like that. No matter how much you try to plan and uh, design your future, you will still need some luck, some uh, coincidence to guide you through, to lead, to be part of your, um, uh, you know, your planning of life. If that is something that you can do. Now, this comes, and I try to bring these ideas in my writing as well. So that's where the writer comes. The academic will analyze and see the symbols as we said about uh, with Bolivia before, but the, the writer will come and uh, synthesize, compose the ideas of uh, that were brought to him with the uh, understanding synchronicity, understanding philosophers, understanding. So we'll have to read a lot and study a lot and understand a lot of things if we want to bring something which will be solid and uh, comprehensible for people to, to read and understand. It, it should not be too much, it shouldn't have too much of fragmentation, if you like, like a ceramic. If you don't bring the vase together, if you don't find the glue and the way to find how the Asians had it uh, from the beginning, you won't have a solid piece that will be comprehensible. I don't know if Clay, uh, Clay I see Clay smiling and understanding what I'm saying, because this is how he thinks, I believe. But to have something solid first, you need to have the pieces, understand the pieces and understand the... That's where um, uh, Derrida comes to my mind as well. Derrida is a philosopher of uh, the 20th century, uh, middle 20th century, and he, he's the one who proposed the idea of uh, uh, fragmentation. It's um, to split things up, but everything is split in the world. Nothing is really connected. And uh, writing and philosophy should uh, focus there that the idea of, uh, of uh, unity is nowadays something which we should not really base our thinking on and that uh, things are changing, that uh, I, spirit, ideas, thought, consciousness is started, has started to becoming more fragmented as we move on in the 21st and the 22nd century, perhaps. I don't know how it will be. Right. So that is how first the things that I wanted to say about how the 
archaeological site has affected me. Clay later will say a few more things about it, and I am very eager to hear what he has to say. And uh, Anne Wilson later. Hi, Anne. How are you? Nice to see you. You're lovely. And uh, uh, she, Anne will share with us a few more things about Clotho because she has read and uh, so edited part of Clotho as well. And uh, who have a connection. And uh, we'll talk about it later. With literature. Yes. It's always about literature. Now, as, uh, before, before we talk about this book, I, I said a few things about uh, uh, gave some spoilers about what things I will talk about. Uh, I, I've covered uh, the part of uh, how I use and implement uh, uh, synchronicity and philosophers in my writing. And uh, I don't want to talk specifically about every and each and every book, how I do this and how it happens. Um, uh, Things that I themes that I I try to cover to touch with my poetry are things of equality of gender, which is very important for me to see that. Uh, uh, first of all, in in my sign, I don't know who believes in in the zodiac and signs. I don't, but my sign is uh, Libra, so I'm an equalizer. I always have you know this thing about finding balances in life, and that and I try to. Uh, with with my writing to not 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 to to focus on balance and to try and bring balance balance uh, to surface and see suggest perhaps some solutions to uh, how balance could be uh, restored. Another thing that I okay of course technology sci-fi I love writing uh, sci-fi things. Clotho is a sci-fi science fiction. I don't. I don't like the term sci-fi. I like the term science fiction. It sounds so much more heavy and uh, full. Uh, Clotho Surfaces is uh, a book that I wrote because I wanted to write science fiction. <laughs> because I love science fiction, I I read many books of science fiction. I used to I, when I was a child. Uh, at the at the times when I was not at weddings with uh, students of uh, Dr. Tomazu or, or hanging out or at the excavation sites, I was reading. Uh, I covered all uh, Jules Byrne, you know, Jules Byrne, the writer, when I was young. I, I read all his books and I was also affected from that uh, uh, reading because uh, Jules Byrne is a writer who uh, knew, knew how technology can change our lives. And uh, it has affected my writing. This is a very important thing. When the, 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 begin, the, the first things that you read, I believe for a writer or a poet, the first things that you read when you're a young uh, teenager will, uh, they will not haunt you, but they will haunt you <laughs> throughout your writing. No matter how much you try to escape or change or reform your uh, writing, it will still be there and it will try to, I mean, this, uh, all, the, all the literature that we read when you're young, you will bring it to your writing again and again in many different forms or ideas. Even, even your vocabulary will be built in the years that you're young. And if, if it is built through science fiction as mine was, then you will bring out words and ideas that have to do with science fiction. For example, time travel, machines, extravagant machines that uh, can uh, do things to people, I mean, uh, change uh, reality, augmented reality, uh, so many different uh, ideas that have to do with uh, science fiction. Um, science fiction is not only machines though and uh, time traveling, sometimes science fiction can be uh, the way a writer perceives uh, reality, if, if you take your, your subject and you decide that your subject is a poem, Polyvia, and then you want to give it voice and uh, impersonalize it, then that's science fiction. I believe it's something like creating a robot poem that will talk for itself and walk. And I, that's how I imagine my poems. I gave them life, not as a god, but as a, a, a muzzle poet. I, I sort of uh, gave up on my own identity to give them life. I, uh, and I, I allowed their attack 
to me. And it wasn't me writing them. I believe, I really truly believe that while I was writing, I, it wasn't me, it was them. I gave them life and I felt it. And I was becoming them and I was crying when I was writing them. It wasn't easy. It's never easy, <laughs> believe me. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. Yes, yes. We feel this uh, passion and this suffering. You could this feel it while you were reading it, didn't it? Yes. Poetry. Just like to clarify, when I said like like a divine eye, I was speaking about the narrative mm. method. The narrative perspective. I know. I know what you were saying. Don't worry. Yeah. I didn't take it. Not the yes. collection of uh, the muzzle, but uh, in so me in the last uh, yes. short story. Yes, yes, they, I know, yes. But sometimes you have to become uh, God over your writing because you do create and you control and you... It, writers are very uh, vain beings. <laughs> we are very vain beings, if I can say that. Vain, you know what I'm saying? I mean, we create a world... Yes, but your poems do not agree with you. That's part no, no, they don't agree. They don't want me to be like that. They, they want... <laughs> they want to kill me <laughs> they want to kill my voice yeah. now yes in order for them to get a voice they have to kill the poet so i was actually killing the poet in that uh, poetry collection for for its own sake <laughs> then i came back to life of course with another collection but the thing is that uh, you know you can do anything with, you want with literature that's what i'm saying it's science fiction it's you create new worlds like dystopian worlds. Sometimes you have to enter dystopia to write something. And I, I, I also love dystopian uh, writing. Uh, the, last, the, the last short story you talked about, uh, Didi Mesa for the Not Trains in uh, Darkness, uh, is a dystopia, so, so, so to speak. I mean, when I wrote, when uh, I wrote it, I, I felt that I was entering a world which is very different. Uh, there was there's attack from everywhere and uh, people start killing each other and killing themselves and uh, because they cannot see the light inside them. That's both spiritual and dystopian at the same time. That's how I felt when I was writing it. Right, and the earth was gone at the very end. So this is what <laughs> science fiction can do. Okay, destroy and build worlds. That's what a writer does. That's what I was trying to say when I say we're vain uh, creatures because we can uh, build and destroy worlds any way we want. It's our own hands. That's why we're, at the same time, we, we should be very careful when we write because we have readers reading us and we, as I said before, I, I, always, I always want to, to to have balance in my writing, to, to promote balance and equality of gender, equality of people, equality of citizens. Like, uh, it's like imagine all the people by John Lennon, everybody equal. I mean, I am on that, uh, you know, way of thinking that everybody's equal. We should try and have equal people, equal opportunities everywhere. And I want to promote that. I believe everybody wants. To do to have a life like that it's very difficult but writing is always a solution and a suggestion at the same time now uh, since we're talking about some before i could anthony could have uh, show us a video that i, I sent uh, over so to just to cool things down and relax and have a small break with a small video and then come back to our discussion if that's possible anthony
This is a video that I made uh, when I, well, after I wrote uh, some, because I like making videos for my <laughs> books, I don't know why. And uh, let's say, this is a small uh, thing that I want to say about directing, because uh, right now I'm uh, in my studies uh, becoming a director and a playwright, because I am a playwright already, I do write uh, theater. The band I have directed as well in my studies now, it's my master's in, uh, it's, uh, in the theory of theater, at the same time directing, practice and everything, all everything that has to do with theater. Uh, I'm sure that uh, Bolivia must have noticed that there is some theatrical, theatricality, if you want to call it, uh, in my, whether it's poetry or uh, prose writing, it still has some theatrical uh, input inside or uh, structure or something like that yes they could all become small monologues or stuff like that that's how they are except for the ones that the narrator is very outside of the picture okay yes um, thank you the video was very nice i could you. see like it reminds me of charlie chaplin's uh, modern okay. time yes yes like very the nice. creation of the being that exactly. was very nice uh, okay. so now it's time to invite uh, mrs Anne Tamil Wilson for her remarks. Uh, Mrs. Anne Tamil is founder and executive uh, is in the founder and executive editor of Poets and Dreamers, the author's network and literary and fine arts journal features in CBS Los Angeles. Anne Tamil works across the world to unite cultures and continents through poetry and art. Anne's collection, Atlas, a Literate Passion, published by St. Julian Press in 2015. A few thoughts on Christo's work based on her long-term term literary friendship with Christos. Uh, Anne, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Um, I really, truly appreciate the honor to be here and share a few words about my longtime relationship with Christos. He has just I, um, been- I'm so happy, so happy. Thank you so much. He's um, been a great inspiration to me as a human being and an author. We met long ago, I believe in 2010, when I was working on a project about my travels through Greece and I wanted to share more about my love for really, you know, the world and, and what I had experienced when I traveled in Greece and the, the, just the loving spirit of the Greek people. And um, he helped me quite a bit with that work, which which was later published in a few different publications. And we worked very briefly um, when he was working through Clotho Services and I could see the potential and I could see his brilliance and the incredible amount of work and research he had done to, to create something that was so unique and powerful and really makes us question who we are and why we're here and what we are to one another. Which really brings me to um, what impresses me and touches me most about Chris Joseph's his incredible love for humanity and the tireless work he does for bringing people together and uniting people and um, really making this, even though we're far apart, we've been connected for so long, you know, it's like we're in the next room. Um, he has such a big heart and you can, I've always felt it. And with everyone here speaking about him, you can feel his heart. Um, it's so powerful. And he's got this, this tireless um, love for humanity that it just impresses me. And he's worked all of these years. I've had the honor of publishing some of his poetry in my journal, Poets and Dreamers, um, about connecting cultures and humanity. And when we that's some of the most difficult work, but it's some of the most important work. And I even during his talk, he spoke about equalizing and that's not simply talk or promotional. That's what he truly believes and works for 
every day of his life is making sure that we're all here connected as humans, no matter how far apart. We're not really different culture, countries and cultures. There are no real true lines that divide us except in our imaginations, but we really truly can come together as people and be much stronger for it. And he's done so much work to make that happen. And it's just been an honor to be a part of that and share that with him. And we've we've really worked together in some ways to connect the world. And I've seen his dreams as he was beginning and, and it's amazing to watch his journey as an author and as a, a poet and now his work with films. Um, he really is a, a, a brilliant, not simply a brilliant author, but this great spirit and a just an enlightened human being who brings people together and um, makes life better for all of us really makes this world a better place to live in. And that's no small that's no small job, but he truly believes in it and he makes progress with it and that's that's a big statement so. <laughs> Thank you so much for the honor of just being here and sharing a few words about um, how he's touched my life and all of ours. The honor is all mine. Uh, and uh, thank you so much for your words. They're kind. And uh, in my heart, I felt that you meant it. And uh, it's, it's even so much more touching, understanding that you meant what you said. And uh, I really feel that you were brother and sister in somehow in this long, thousands of kilometers uh, distance we're still as you said we have worked together we still communicate anytime i asked anything from you you were there i hope i've done the same for you and uh, our, our long talks and uh, it's not like we know we're friends like from social media we have connected and uh, our love for literature both of our, uh, uh, our love for literature has brought us together and connected us and uh, i believe it's a light that will uh, light for many years to come Thank you so much for your words. It's been Thank an you. honor. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm Thank Dr. You. Clay Koffer. Yes. Okay, sure. Your, Clay, your microphone. I guess Dr. Koffer is not here. Ah, okay, I'm sorry. Turn it on, turn it on. Okay, you'll find it. So hear me yes everybody hear me yes yes oh great um well it's 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 also really an honor um to to be a a part of this and um with all of these um you know amazing uh greek and greek american writers and cypriot writers um and and also to be um invited here by uh, Christos uh, Shailis um, and uh, um, and also to have uh, um, really a, a father um, to me here, um, Dr. Michael Tomazu, who um, who it's also his birthday today. So, Kroni yes. Pola, um, Mihaly. Yes. And, uh, and so, uh, yes, um, you know, I've known uh, Christos for for many years. Um, and, uh, but actually, um, his whole family, and it's been intimately related to, um, the archaeological project, um, that Christos and, uh, um, was referring to. And also we heard, uh, Dr. Tomazu speaking about, um, the Athenu archaeological project. Um, and so I, I came a little later to the game, um, you know, after, uh, Christos, um, had been working there. Um, and so it took me a while to, um, uh, to get a chance to even meet him. Um, I actually met his um, younger brother first, who is also on here, uh, Sulis Chailis. And, uh, um, hey, and, <laughs> um, and really, uh, I mean, Christos, um, his whole family um, is so special and talented. Um, and, you know, I was the foreigner um, coming to Cyprus and Athienu, um, just as how Christos was, um, you know, referring to um, Michael Tomazu, who was from the village, but he was coming back. Um, I really was a complete American coming to uh, Athienu as a 20-year-old. 
Um, and not only um, does this village um, of Athienu, uh, which, um, you know, for those who, who don't know, I mean, uh, speaking of what Christos was talking about um, and the sense of, of creating a story or a landscape that can be a utopia or a dystopia or something like that, um, Athienu, um, also like uh, Nicosia, where he is also from, um, is, is very much defined by its, its um, landscape, um, including its current uh, political landscape, um, because the Green Line goes around the village, um, uh, the UN uh, um, monitored buffer zone. And so uh, in many um, science fiction novels, it could be a dystopia, um, but when actually, when you go there, you find it to be a real utopia um, because this village is so resilient and so warm and, um, and so thriving um, despite being sort of cut off from a lot of the island. And it's so full of um, history, um, both ancient and medieval and modern um, and very recently modern, of course, um, you know, with the, you know, the political um, history of the past, you know, 45, 50 years. Um, and so I think, uh, you know, definitely as, as Christos was, was talking about his experience with uh, the excavation, I think um, anybody who has um, worked with archaeology or has dealt with archaeology can um, understand where he's coming from. And um, this piecing together of, of, uh, of a story um, through fragments. And um, I think, you know, he mentioned uh, clay and um, ceramics, which are the stuff we have most of. Um, and so, you know, archeology, span um, you know, is, is a lot of, I mean, there's the evidence, but there's also a lot of, of storytelling because you have to piece um, everything together and before you know it, you become part of the story, whether you really intend to or not. Um, as uh, Michael Tomazu can attest, um, our excavation there now is 31 years old. And so we are part of the archeological record. And so is um, Athienu, the village, and also those who passed through it. And Christos was one of the first. Um, and so it's, it's a time of of beginnings. And so I, I can definitely um, see uh, that, I mean, I wasn't a part of that original crew, um, but I've been working there for, geez, half my life um, in the summers that you don't really know what you're going to find um, at a place like um, we were excavating, um, which is a very spiritual place. It was a, um, a sanctuary site in the countryside um, and so, you know, for those who don't know the history, the, the mythology of Cyprus, of course, it's the island of, of Aphrodite, um, um, the island of love where she was born, and, um, and there are epithets of Aphrodite that refer to um, the ancient city that's near Christos's village, um, Golgoi, Golgia, Afro, Aphrodite Golgia, um, and there are tales of Adonis, um, you know, in the area as well. And, you know, we have found um, the god Pan and Heracles and Apollo and all of those. And so it's a very rich um, landscape. And so, um, you know, how we fit into that current landscape, um, you know, whether we're actually from there or whether we're um, were imported, um, something we also get with the archaeological record. And so, um, you know, again, I was the, the foreigner coming to Athienu, um, but I was welcomed by the locals, particularly Christos's family. Um, and I have to say that it's, it's so amazing to get to know Christos and his, his work through the years, because he was a bit of a mystery at the beginning, because um, Again, I knew his younger siblings, Christos had already, um, you know, left the, the household by that he was old, he was older. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I looked up to Christos in a sense of not knowing who he was, but knowing of 
um, you know, that he's in, in uh, Nicosia, and that he's, he's well read and traveled and all of that. Um, and then, you know, finally, when, um, you know, Clotho was, was, uh, came out and um, I was able to go to the, um, the reception in Nicosia. Um, and so it's, it's really been, um, uh, you know, a, a wonderful experience um, getting to know um, more and more of an amazing family, different facets of, of Christos's family. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think, um, uh, you know, it's, 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 you, you can see how Christos has also now become part of the story of Athienu has become part of the story of um, what we're doing um, with uh, discovering the history of Athienu because that history doesn't stop. And um, these ideas, these innovations of, of looking at things um, always reflect back on what, what is and what's present. So um, again, I, you know, I'm very, very happy to, to be here. Um, and uh, thank you, uh, Christos, um, for inviting me. But if, if, you, if you have any questions or anything that I can help with too, please. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm lost in words. Thank you so much for your kind words. No, my, it, it's my it family. very, very I sincere. That. Thank you very much. And I, I can, I, I felt it. I know, I know. I mean, don't worry. <laughs> I know. It's always been like that. The, the things that now can officially say that we play, we're all made of clay. <laughs> yes, everybody's yes, and, made of clay. And, and yeah, one of that's... the other stories tomorrow is the, what, the Saint Spiridon Day? Ayo Spiridonas? <laughs> yes. Who yes, also yes, was yes. a shepherd around Spiridon. Athienu. And he yes. did a miracle showing that the composition of clay, something like that. So exactly, yeah. We can bring yeah, that tomorrow too. Tomorrow is St. Spiridonas <laughs> uh, Day. St. Spiridonas is an Orthodox uh, saint, and uh, he made the, the miracle of uh, sort of getting a piece of uh, clay and, uh, and squ squeezing it in his hands and bringing out water and dirt and fire. Yes? And fire yeah. came up. Yeah, yeah, that's how that's how it was. Yes, exactly. Yes, we're all made of clay. I mean, it's always been like that, and <laughs> nobody can change it. But we can all become Aphrodites, male and female Aphrodites. <laughs> we can change this clay, as you said before. Yes, as we come from the island. But yeah, you know, being a poet, I have to create. I kind of just stay there and say yes. All right. Thank you all for your nice remarks. We will now open the floor for questions, and I invite Ipatia also to like uh, ask the audience. Okay, if you have so questions, you just raise your hand or uh, put on your video so I can see you. Okay, so uh, let me know who has questions. By the way, thank you so much. This has been a wonderful presentation. I've enjoyed listening to everybody. I know as I was listening to uh, Christos, uh, I had a question, but he answered it about wow. his inspiration. <laughs> You, you answered every me. question I had. You were very thorough, and I was very impressed. And uh, it's, uh, I was, when you were talking uh, with the archaeology and Clay and uh, Michael and talking about archaeology, I was picturing myself visiting Cyprus and writing a book yeah, yeah. about something of like course. that. I mean, you were You're always welcome, me. you know I mean? <laughs> Yeah, please. So I, I want to thank you for that. You, uh, you, it was a very artistic presentation, and I, I felt the, the, you know, in the air, something very artistic. So I hope everybody else felt the same way. And Anne Maria, I really appreciate your, your comments. And we're going to have to definitely check your uh, poetry journal. You got my interest. <laughs> and your books and as well. Yeah, Paper yeah Avers, and, uh, and maybe you can put, Anne-Marie, if you can put in the chat the name of your poetry journal for everybody to see, I would really appreciate yes, it. Please. Okay, thank you. So much. Anybody else? Andy, do you have any comments? I don't have comments, just that really thank you so much, everybody, that you've made this, you've presented this so well. And uh, I hail from Jordan. I'm in Amman, Jordan now. And I'm part wow. of this beautiful uh, Hellenic writers group. 
And I thank you, Mr. Tsiailis, and everybody I else you, for making it so interesting. I was saying, okay, what is it going to be now? You know, what's new? What's going to come? And actually, Good. you That's managed nice. <laughs> to not thank only get our it's attention, not easy. It's attention, not easy it to keep people, uh, you know, to keep thank people you interested so when you're online. It's not easy. It's very difficult to keep people interested mm -hmm. when you're having an online That's session. Absolutely. Uh, I hope I may, Thank you. Uh, we, we all managed to do that. It was too. super interesting and very inspiring. Thank you so much. Thank Anybody you. else? Hi, can I say something? Sure, who is this? Hello. Hi, oh. little brother. Hello. He's my little, Hi, little brother. brother. <laughs> I'm, I'm Christos as a little brother. Um, yeah. uh, I'm Hello, not saying you. this because he's my brother, but he he's uh, more than anything else he's a uh, he's an intellectual because he he in his inside his veins literature flows uh, i mean yeah, <laughs> more, he he he, lo he loves writing and reading more than anything else and uh, i I, I know that he's been writing since he was 11, 12. He couldn't stop writing. And uh, his, imagination, his imagination is so, so fruitful. Um, he, I'm not saying this because he's my brother. I feel so honored to be his You're brother. Sure about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, yes, but... Uh, I know, I know that he's a real treasure of literature, and he has to, he has to produce uh, these golden product that he extracts out of his soul and spirit and mind, and he must never stop, never, never lose this drive that he has, uh, this fuel. The, the energy and inspiration that keeps him going and writing. And I believe that he will uh, affect many people in many ways because he writes about everything. He doesn't write about, he's not like uh, one aspect uh, type of writer that, for example, Sylvia Plath would write due to her um, de depression, she would write something that is uh, characteristic of Sylvia Plath. He writes in many ways, in many colors. And I believe that there are many types of readers that can be drawn to him. So I believe that he must even press the gas of his inspiration even more and more and, and create uh, golden uh, literature. He, he's like a gold mouth, like my, my name. My name is Chrysostomos, golden mouth. He is also a golden mouth. Okay, you burned your dinner. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> you burned your dinner <laughs> tonight. I'm buying Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. So <laughs> is you I believe you should Doctor, be a writer, not me. <laughs> I, I, want, I want to be family. Your prep talk is so. <laughs> I want Thank to you. be honored post mortem. <laughs> Listen. Uh, uh, Thank you, Thank uh, you Doctor, very much, Mr. Ostomos. Doctor Tomazu, happy birthday, always healthy. Doctor Tomazu, always healthy. Enjoy your family. Christos, I had Thank one you. more question Ciao. before yes. Um, yes. I, yes. I I answered Alice. You mentioned you had a teaser about the publishing world, but you didn't mention yes, it afterwards. Yes, uh, which I I'm still waiting. It blew off. Yes, okay, I will go back to that. Now, uh, the beginning with 2000, 2002, 2003, it was very difficult for writers, much more difficult than it is nowadays. Because you know, I don't know why. I mean, it's happening. Perhaps there are much, many more. There are many more writers around, and more publishing houses. I don't know how it was. I went to Athens. My experience was that I, I took three manuscripts. The one was a novel and the others were poems and short stories. I printed them in Cyprus, took the plane, went to Athens. I didn't know how to do it. I just went and, and knocked on doors. 
and uh, I left a few. Uh, I found a printing place, a printing house, and I printed more copies. And I left them to publish and I asked their secretaries if they could take the books. Uh, I got letters back, uh, which were saying good things about my work, but uh, that uh, it was very, I don't know, communist uh, genre and stuff like that, which it wasn't, but you know, they, they had to have an answer. And that hurt me. It, I was younger, much younger, and uh, I felt rejected. I felt this feeling of rejection. And, for years, I, I kept uh, writing uh, over and over things, rewriting, editing, and stuff like that. I was going to workshops. I was fighting very hard. Perhaps in my, in my need to improve my writing, I was learning things all the way through. Now, uh, nowadays, publishing, uh, well, if you want to publish your book, uh, you don't need to have an Instagram and followers. It's not like that's not like modeling. It's very different. <laughs> you you need to sort of uh, shape your manuscript in a way that is very presentable, first of all, uh, but not uh, uh, to the paging and uh, make it completely and thoroughly perfect for the publisher. You need to have good writing. That's the first thing we need to uh, put aside and remember that we need to have good writing if we want to get published. That's the first thing. Now, there are, there are emails of publishers that you will send your manuscript, but that's the first thing. So you need to find uh, on the internet, you will find their websites and get their emails to submit your work. And uh, then uh, you will have to wait for three, four months, if you're lucky to get an answer, answer back. And uh, there, uh, at that point, you will either get accepted or rejected. That's how it goes. They always, most of the publishers in Greece, at least, justify their rejection. If there is a rejection, if there is an acceptance, there's not. You don't need to have a just justification for that. Yes, you just get the acceptance. Um, uh, most publishing houses nowadays uh, want a, a fee for their publishing. It's very rare to accept uh, a, a new by new author which is, who is not known, hasn't become known yet. It's not his fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth book. Uh, and they ask you for a fee. It's not a small fee in, in euros because you're in the States. In dollars, it would be like uh, 1600, 1700 uh, dollars that they would ask for a, uh, for a small novel or a poetry collection. It depends on the size of the, the, how many pages you've written. But at the same time, it, it depends on uh, the genre. Uh, if it's uh, po whether it's poetry or uh, prose. Uh, they do, if it's a good publishing house, they will do the paging, the, the cover and everything. They will uh, fix up everything and promote it to, 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 to book, uh, to bookshops, uh, real bookshops, not uh, online, also online. They have this uh, circulation as well. And so uh, it's very difficult to, to find a to find a publisher who will publish your book for free this will happen after you have published one or two books it's a rule thank you thank you yeah we've That's all experienced our, the rejection i'm always honest I, I never tried to sort of uh, lie or uh, trick that's how it happens. That's how it is. Exactly. If you are very lucky, or perhaps if your book is so good that they will um, picture it in the future, that it will be the next bestseller in Greece or in any other place in the world, they will uh, publish it for free. Thank you. If it's, a very, yeah. if, if it's a very, very good uh, publication, very, not good, I mean, all publishing houses are good. If it's a very famous or you know very high with with a very high standards publishing house you will be rejected it's very difficult to go there yes very very difficult it's not yes. connections that it, would, it has to be a very good book thank but you try always try always try always try exactly yes bravo Thales, you had a question yeah hi everybody it's not so much a question but uh an expression of gratitude for the exceptional presentation by Christos, 
who, by the way, we have crossed paths before, probably in the Mediterranean Sea or on a bicycle, because he may recall my triathlon days too. So the um, six degrees of separation do not apply uh, yeah. here in Cyprus. We are separated by one degree or less. And mm -hmm. so it is not a coincidence that we know each other. Also a huge congratulations to, well, of course, you, Patty, and Michael, uh, Bolivia, for your articulate and uh, e expressive manner in sharing what you know of Christos. And so that's all. It's just to thank you, Patty, for, thank for you so organizing much. this. And I feel uh, yes, a, a so love to Patty. Yeah, of course. Thank, thank you. you. And and just to let you know, Thales will be speaking to us in January. He has also written thank a book. So I you. hope you can uh, you can come. Uh, if you're interested in our writers group, um, uh, send me a little a notice here, and I'll, I'll I'll give you the email so you can be on the mailing list. And this way, we we continue to communicate and and uh, grow together as as uh, writers. Um, yes, it's Marie Gorder, and I oh. would like to just say a few words. I would like sure. to say that uh, what I am so impressed by is that uh, Christos would like to bring everybody together. And Marie said that, and I was so taken by the poll and everyone gathered together. She said he's committed to doing that every day of his life and that this is so much a part of him. And I felt that just with the poll and the, and so, so me, and, and I, I want to say that I think at this time in society, I am so um, thankful that he is so committed to wanting to do that and that he is and that and that is, and that is one of his life commitments and I, I i appreciate him doing that and i wanted to say so thank you you're uh, just... inspiring and I, I am devoted to this cause for people like you mari thank you so much thank you your words uh, just, are inspiring, and I, I am devoted to this cause for people like you, Mari. Thank you so much. I also wanted to mention that um, uh, Dr. Mary Peters Hirschback is with us also, and she was one of the original uh, people of the Un University of Maryland uh, Classics Department. She was uh, oh. uh, she was retired now, but she joins our group uh, occasionally, and and we we'd, we'd love to hear from her. Do you have any comments to make? Okay. I just wanted Brilliant. to thank you, Patty, for organizing this. And I want to thank uh, Christos Chailis for thank this wonderful for presentation. I, I learned so much from it and uh, I'm really excited. <laughs> um, I love the connection between archeology span and literature and what he's done seems fascinating to me and I can't wait to find out more about it. But I'm also thrilled to hear about Athienu. Um, I didn't know that about the archaeology there, and I'd like to learn more about that too. My father, part of my father's family, hails from Dali, ancient Dalian. Oh, really? Dali is an ancient there, kingdom as well. I wanted to go see what's going on. Uh, I didn't know that similar things are happening at um, Athienu. It, it's what a thrill. Yeah. Uh, I'd love to wow. find out about it. Thank you well so Well brought much. together. <laughs> yes, you brought us together. <laughs> Thank you. So nice. Thank you. Okay, um, I'm going to... Uh, Irene, uh, Irene, yeah. Irene Papakiriakou wants to say something. Oh, okay, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, I don't know if you can uh, hear me. Yes, uh, very well. We Great. can't see you, uh, but we can hear you. <laughs> yeah, due to uh, some technical difficulties. Don't but worry. Um, yeah. um, Risa, I just want to thank you so much for uh, inviting me to, to this uh, very, very special event, um, life event, My I would honor. say. Um, and thank you to, uh, to everyone who contributed to uh, um, making this possible. 
Um, I just wanted to say that um, uh, something that I told you uh, before, you saw that I was really looking forward to this, because every every time that um, an event happens and you are part of it or certain parts, let's say if it's a book launch or if it's uh, a poetry um, you know, gathering, every single time there is this identity that you, that, that, that has its, let's say it's, it has its stamp of you. And um, this idea of you bringing people together um, is felt by all of us in, in, this, um, in this gathering. And this is very special for me as well. Um, I feel it too. That's, that's um, synchronicity, isn't it? Uh, it is. As well. It is. Jung is always um, there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indeed. And I just want to say, Crystal, that in uh, our last uh, meeting, uh, during your last um, uh, book launch of uh, Symptomata, yes. um, uh, I said something there. I said that your last work um, really, really is grounded in translation, I mean, in Greek so much. Um, in Greek language that I don't know if it's possible even um, to have a good rendering of that in, in, in English and uh, in any other language, indeed, not just in English. Um, but now that I have seen this aspect of you that we didn't know before uh, with archaeology, um, I would say that uh, indeed every single bracket, every square bracket, um, with an, fa, uh, uh, or na, like you, you propose there, every single fragment. Um, You're getting there. That you, with your hands, it. your hand, I was actually looking at your hands and the way that you were carrying out each hand, each, each uh, piece of history, carrying it out to us, but you were bringing all these temporalities together right now, just as you were doing this hand gesture. This is something that we haven't touched upon that day. And uh, I would really like to um, There's add so to much that. we haven't touched. I mean, it's- Yeah. Uh, we, we, we would- we, Yeah, Christo, I mean, we-, we um, And I, I remember uh, Mrs. Ftihia, uh, uh, Alexander Lukidou, who talked a lot about the aspect of language, uh, and I agree that on uh, many grounds uh, with Ms. Lukidou. So I just wanted for reference to say that, yes, every everything is some kind of a surface. So we're talking about surface texts in your case. Um, and I'm really particular in that aspect as well of your work, that right now resurfaces uh, very beautifully um, with this with this event. So I'm glad to be here in your own life history present. Um, thank you so much. I'm so glad so you're here, Irene. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Calliope. And then we'll 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 close it up. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you, Paddy, for bringing those wonderful people in our uh, uh, meetings. Uh, this is amazing. I'm so impressed uh, with everybody. And especially with uh, Christos. Christo, you're an amazing human being. I, uh, when, I, when I saw your book, uh, so me, and I started reading it, uh, I said, oh my God, this is, this is an intellectual um, uh, human being. It's, it's something out of this world. And I'm, uh, I'm proud uh, of you, and uh, I hope uh, to read uh, more about your uh, work. Amazing. Keep it up. Be Thank well. Thank you very much, Calliope. And Thank you so much. Thank you. Calliope is one Thank of our uh, poets of our group. She's been yes, with us for many Calliope. years. Yeah, I've read. Yes. So um, and, uh, we're very... You don't say anything when you hear words like that. You just keep fighting. That's how I feel. Yeah, yeah. so if you want to continue these discussions, join our monthly groups that we have here at Zoom, and we can talk about all kinds of uh, different aspects of writing. Right. And I will close um, the session.
Thank you, Christos, for your wonderful presentation. You I thank every thank I want to thank everybody for their presence. You, Patia, Olivia, Michael, Clay, Anne Marie for your input and uh, all the canon Chrysostomo, Sirini, and all the people who talked, uh, Thalys. Thank you so much, and uh, we'll be in touch. <laughs> That's what yeah, we want and, to do. Um, <laughs> yes. Okay, and you covered so many aspects of your life in writing from your past and working with Dr. Tomazos and his archaeological group when you were a teenager to your love for English and reading and how your reading influenced it you. It all blended and, together. I, I believe it all blended together. It's yeah. Well, that's where you you know you find the center of why someone writes. And we need I, to go I there. enjoyed your humbleness, although you said uh, writers are vain. I think you do have you some know, humbleness. <laughs> but you knew what I meant, yes. And your deep feelings and also your wisdom when describing your writing life through fundamental lens by taking fragments of reality and combining them into a piece of art and how synchronicity and coincidence appear in our lives to which I'm sure our writers appreciate. I also appreciate your expression, expressing the topic of equality and equality of gender. I'd also like to thank Dr. Parada for moderating, moderating this event, Dr. Tomazos, Dr. Coffer, and Ann Wilson for your wonderful comments about Christos. I'd also like to thank all who contributed in making today's literary event a success. These types of discussions across the vast stretch of ocean unite us all in these common themes of poetry and writing, enriching our lives, inspiring us, and expanding our universe. For those of you interested in getting copies of Mr. Cialis's books, they are available on amazon.com. Uh, you can also contact the author directly on, directly on Facebook. He did not tell me to do this, but I feel no, very it's... strongly that it's good <laughs> that we, we contribute. And this concludes the program for Thank today. You. Good evening, Kalinichta, Kepalisto Parapoli. Kalinichta, good night. Kalinichta is good night for those who don't speak Kalinichta. Bye, Ann, bye, Clay, bye, Michael, bye, Badia, bye, Lydia, bye. Kalis, Kalinichta, Kalinichta.